Hey, Eli for Mobox Graphics again. In this video we will go over some basic modeling, lighting and animation techniques while building a simplified forklift. Even though it looks like quite an easy object to make, it takes a lot of attention to detail to get it right. I would also like to make clear that my method of building this isn't the only way to do it or the ultimate way to do it. There will be mistakes that I'll have to fix during the video but I'm pretty sure you'll encounter some of these as well. So I hope you can also learn something from seeing me make these mistakes and how I fix them. So let's get started. I will use a reference image to work with. I found this one on Google Images, but I'll link this specific one in the description so you can follow along. When you've saved that image to your computer, open up the viewports and we will set this one on the right viewport. Do that by clicking the options menu right here. Then at the bottom we can pick configure and make sure you're on the back tab and you can add the image in this field here. You can also decrease the transparency a little bit so it is easier to see your own geometry on top of that image later on. Alright let's start off with a cube and I'm going to align that bottom right corner with the bottom of our middle section of the forklift we can see. Now if you make this cube editable, we can select the individual polygons and start moving them in place. Actually I want the side to line up with the biggest chunk of the yellow part. I recommend always starting with the biggest part of your model anyway, so that is this big chunk here. Ok, what I found to be the best thing to do next is making this part around the wheel at the right. What I'm actually going to do is making two small duplicates of this polygon on each side of the wheel and a bigger one at the end, so I can select this large bottom polygon and move it up. So because of these secondary duplicates we made, we get this slanted transition instead of just a straight one. So that is why I made two duplicates at every side. Next we will work a little to the top here, which means that we need a cut at this line. The easiest way is to select your loop cut tool by pressing K and L, or you can right click and pick it here. If you are on one of the older versions of Cinema 4D, you will only find the knife tool and no loop cut tool or anything, and you will need to select the loop function at the side here. So let's make the cut right on this black line. And now we can select and extrude these polygons at the top. You want to make a first stop right where this little indent stops, and then make a second extrusion all the way to the top. Now we need to get this little indent back. I find it to be the easiest by just extruding it inwards like this. But that keeps these polygons at the side, so what I did is just selecting and deleting them, so we can replace them with new ones. To do that, go in the edge mode, and right click somewhere, and take the bridge tool. And when you drag from one edge to the other now, it will create a new polygon for you. Up next is the part at the front. We need to keep these footsteps in mind, but you can see the middle part is at the same level as the rest of our object so far, so I will make use of that by creating that middle section first. Get that front polygon here, and use your scale tool while holding Ctrl or Command to make a horizontal duplicate. But before extruding this, we need a cut right where the steps begin. So get the line cut or knife tool, and in the side view you can make a cut like this one, while holding Shift, so it is a straight line. And I forgot to turn off the visible only check mark here. It needs to be turned off so we get this same cut on the other side of the forklift as well. So let's do this again. You may also need to press escape to finish the cut line. And right now there only seems to be a missing edge at the front here. But you can easily drag a cut from one point to the other, like this. Great, let's select these three polygons now and extrude these all the way to the edge where the steps stop. Now we can continue with just these two middle ones that will go between our two wheels. So extrude these and just place them up a little so it kind of matches the angle of the image. You can also select some of the edges individually and move them a little to get a more convincing shape like this. When that is done we can start making these covers above the wheel. To start these we need a small polygon starting from the step. So let's see. With the line cutter knife tool and the visible only option still turned off, let's start a cut right on the edge here. And that already seems to make a cut like we want one. So just anti-cut somewhere in the open and press escape to stop the cutting. 
You can also select both these new edges and move them up a little if it seems a little big. Okay, so let's select these polygons now. And as a first step, I will be extruding them to the front so it lines up with the image. After that, we can gently rotate this polygon in the direction of that line we will be following. So let's duplicate again to the next corner and gently rotate again. But you should not rotate too far because you will turn this in a triangle like this and we don't want that. I have to admit there are probably more correct ways to do this, but sometimes I prefer speed over perfection. You won't notice it at this scale anyway. Great, mine seems alright now, but you can always adjust any edges or points if you need to. The rough shape of our yellow body part is done now. Let's move on to this black piece on the top of it. I'm gonna start off with a new cube again, because the black part is also a separate piece on the real forklift. And to get this nicely connected with the other part we just finished, we can enable some snapping features down here. Click and hold this button and let's enable the edge snapping and the polygon snapping as well. So we are sure it will snap to anything that is close to it. Also make sure the snapping is actually enabled so the button is blue. And now we can make the cube editable and move these polygons in place. The snapping will work or not depending on the view you're using. Like this one doesn't want to snap because it isn't actually overlapping anything in the viewport. But in the front view it will snap because it does overlap, so try some different viewports if it isn't working for you. For the small piece at the front here, it probably is better to end our big piece at this spot, so we can do the same thing as we did with the part below it, with the footsteps. Maybe we can already get this angle right as well. So get this front edge, and I would like to move it straight down, but that is impossible with how the axis looks right now. So enable the axis mode and set all the rotation values down here to zero and hit apply. Now don't forget to disable the axis mode and we can move this edge down now. Okay, after that, with that front polygon still selected, you can scale this inward again while holding control or command. And let's also make sure the new edges kind of align with the elevated piece beneath it. You should probably do this with the knife tool, but let's see how this will turn out. We can duplicate or extrude this piece again now. And also move this edge a little so we get a nice angle on both sides. That looks like a good start so far. Before moving on, it is probably a good time to make sure the proportions are right. Looking at the front of this, it looks like a person would barely fit in it because it's so narrow. So let's scale both of these pieces together. Something around 130% horizontal scaling seems alright for me. We will now move on and get the seat in here. Just a simple cube will do to start with. I'm also going to use a second smaller one under it so it doesn't float. And for the back piece you can just duplicate the bottom piece and make it a little shorter. Let's also try to get this bottom corner to slightly overlap. For now this seems alright, we will get in the details later on. The next part we can make is the dashboard at the front. I will stick with the essentials of it, but feel free to make it as detailed as you like. I'm going to start off with a cube again. And we can use the snap function to get these polygons to line up with the rest of it all again. I'm not sure about how close I will get it to the image, but let's just move these points around until we get a rough shape of it. To get this diagonal edge here, we can use the bevel tool from the right click menu, or you can also press M and S. And when the subdivisions are set at zero, it will give you a flat cut at the corner. Okay, let's see how we can make this extrusion at the bottom. I guess we can make a regular cut across. And after that we will just move this bottom edge to the floor. And maybe also a little extrusion to fill this gap right here. Just pick whatever works for your model, it's all the same techniques anyway. Alright, we are getting somewhere now. Now we have all the components of the body, we can add the roof and the cage around the seat. You can get a cube again for this and make it match with the roof on the side view. But also check the top view to make sure it is wide enough. And now when we make this editable, we can make a loop cut like this. And you want to make sure you have a specific value for this. 
like in my case uh, 25 centimeter distance from the edge seems like a nice thickness for the beams of the cage so this way we can make cuts on all the other sides with the exact same distance this means we get some perfect squares at every corner which we can extrude in just a moment so let's start with the two at the front and just extrude these while holding control or command and holding this handle on the corner so you can move it freely instead of on just one axis we are going to do this in three steps so we get some curve to it like on the original image let's also select these bottom edges and make sure they connect with the body so it isn't floating okay now we can do the same thing on the back and this one only has the curve at the top so let's do it like this and by doing this you can also see it will not connect with the yellow portion at the back probably because the reference image still has some perspective to it but we can just select all the points at the side of our object here and move these a little to the right so now with this roof on it it finally starts to look like a forklift now let's get some wheels on this I will be making smooth tires for two reasons first of all because it is simple to make and also because you will not need to animate the wheel rotation because you can see the difference anyway so for the tire itself we can use a tube object and get it to match the tire of the reference image let's also move it to the side so it doesn't look like a ridiculous moped or something and a nice thing to do with this is enabling the fillet option on this with only one segment so it gets the bevel on the sides to fill the center we can just use a regular cylinder make it just large enough to overlap the inside of our tube object and after making it editable we can select all the polygons at the front and make an inner extrusion by hitting I on the keyboard first and after that push this new circle in a little to get a bit of a rim effect also make a new inner extrusion almost to the center and we can extrude this out again like this maybe even add a second extrusion which we can scale down so it gives us a bit of a rounded end okay maybe we can also make this tire a little wider with the height value I also feel like adding a little more detail to that rim so for example we can select these polygons again and make another small inner extrusion like this and move it forward again so we get a little more detail to it let's group these two objects together by pressing Alt and G and now we can make a copy of this and put it at the end of the forklift make sure especially the bottom of the wheel matches the image so the forklift isn't floating on one side and right now it looks like our wheel would not fit within the wheel cage or the forklift around it so the easiest solution to this is getting the rectangle selection tool with the only select visible elements turned off and select the points at the left side so we can move these and make more room for the wheels you can also move these points at the right a little if you want to grab these two wheel groups we made so we can move some duplicates of them to the other side also don't forget to rotate them okay moving on let's finish that dashboard by adding a steering wheel and some handles first off we need a cylinder that will hold the steering wheel so make that match with the image and after that you can make a copy of that cylinder and scale it like this so it fits that bigger section at the top and now finally for the steering wheel itself we will be using just a tube again get that in place in the perspective view you can see the middle is a little small right now so make that bigger so the thickness of the wheel is almost equal on both the vertical and horizontal side of it let's also turn on the fill adoption again to make it smoother I think four or five segments will look good and something rather important now you should decrease the rotation segments on this so these polygons on the inside become a little larger but you should also make sure there is one complete segment right in the middle of the bottom part of the wheel so 24 segments makes it have an edge at the exact middle of the wheel but 22 gives us a full segment instead I'm also going to make a duplicate of the cylinder and make that the part that will connect with the wheel so now we could make this editable or actually hold on I'm going to smooth this out in just a minute anyway so let's undo that 
And actually we can even remove the fillet on this as well. Sorry about that. Now we can make this editable and select one polygon above the middle at the side here. Also the middle one at the bottom and of course one on the other side as well. With these selected you can press D for the extrude tool and make that extrusion so they almost touch at the center. Don't deselect yet but move them down a little first. And by the look of it I also need to move the whole steering wheel a little to overlap the cylinder. Alright, to smooth this out we can use a subdivision surface and drag the wheel inside of it. Which also gives these rounded ends here, which we don't need. But you can easily fix this by making a small extrusion on the middle polygons again. That way it will try to round the small sections we just created instead of the whole length of that connection. There seems to be one thing wrong with the rounding still. And this is happening because tubes and cylinders mostly don't have the top and bottom cap connected to the sides of the object. So the subdivision surface sees this as just flat planes instead of a solid object, so it doesn't see the corners. Luckily we can easily connect these all by selecting all the polygons or points or edges or whatever by pressing Ctrl or Command and A. And then use the shortcut U and then O to optimize the selection. You can also find this when you right click and go close to the bottom. So when you've done this we have a steering wheel. Let's add just two more handles next to it to make it more convincing. We can just recycle the cylinder and make it a little smaller. Also add a second one while we are at it. And I want their ends to be just at the dashboard so we can rotate them nicely in just a second. But first make a copy of these cylinders together and move them up a little. Now we can scale these so they look like the actual grips of the handles. Let's also group them appropriately so we have each handle individually. And I would like to rotate the second one to get more variation in the scene. But that will not look correct when we do it just straight away like this. So we need to move the axis of the null to the point where it connects with the dashboard like so. And now when you rotate it will look more natural. Great, one last part we need to add to the forklift now is the actual fork. I will start with the frame that holds the actual fork. The base for this will be just a cube like this one. And we are going to work on just one side of this and use the symmetry object after that so it mirrors itself. So I'm getting a small extrusion here, roughly the size of the beam at its thickness. And now I can extrude this upwards. Let's see, the object should be in place of course. Okay, now we can start faking a curve up here by just extruding and rotating the polygon every time. You probably want to hold shift while rotating, so it is easier to make equal steps in rotation every time. Also make sure to not rotate too far again, because it will make these segments look smaller, and we don't want that. And when we arrive at the horizontal polygon again, we can make a last longer extrusion to somewhere in the middle. So what we need to do now is getting the symmetry object and get that cube object inside of it and you will see it will mirror itself to the other side. From here it is easy again to just get some long cubes to make a connection between the two sides. I think it looks good to have thin ones on the top, the same size as the frame. And below that we can get some bigger ones that will hold the forks later. Now here at the top of the frame I would like to have 5 vertical ones. It's up to you how you do this. But we can get a cloner for this and put the first vertical cube into it. You can do this with the default linear mode like I'm doing here. But actually for this kind of stuff I prefer to work with the grid array. So it starts from the middle instead of the left or the right like in the linear mode. Just get the count right on the direction they need to go and keep the other ones on one. And now with some rotations under the transform tab, we can finally set the size of the cloner so they fit within the frame we made earlier. Okay, that piece is done for now. Let's get these big bars behind this. They are the part that makes the fork elevate, I guess. Make sure it is also in proportion from the front. And now we can put this under the symmetry object as well. But you can see that breaks the previous part we mirrored because it only mirrors the first object under it. So select both objects and group them by pressing Alt and G. So it sees it as one object. 
All we need to do now is moving this cube away from the middle like this. I'm also going to copy this cube and paste it outside of the symmetry object again. So we can resize this to be the connection at the top of the bars. I'm not exactly sure how this part looks in real life, but I'm just going to get another cube on each side, so it kind of represents some detail I've seen in some pictures. When this is in the symmetry object, it nicely places it on both sides again. The last piece we need to finish this is probably the most important one. So I'm just quickly going to recycle one of these cubes up here to make a fork. I prefer to place them a little lower than on the image, otherwise it will not look good picking up crates and stuff. I also notice I somehow lowered my wheels on one side. I'm going to remove these for now and fix that later. Okay, back to that cube. Let's make it long enough. Roughly to the point where it starts to slim down a little. From there we can make an extrusion and then scale down the front polygon a little, so we get a bit of a curve to it. And now at the other side we can also extend it almost to the corner. And then make an extrusion again that is roughly shaped like a square in the side view. And by doing that we can easily extrude this up again to finish the base shape. Mine is also ridiculously wide, so I'm going to scale this horizontally here. And when you get this under the symmetry object again, the model is finally completed in its low poly format. Maybe we can also select these edges at both sides of the corner and add a bevel to it. I think it looks good with just one subdivision for this. We can also do something similar at the front here to make it a little less pointy. And I'm also going to select some of these edges at the front and move these down a little. I'm not going to pay too much attention to this right now, this will do. I'm also going to fix these wheels right now. I don't know where this went wrong, I guess you are not having this problem, but this should fix it for now. Right now we have a model that is ready to use, but I still want to add some extra detail to it by rounding some of the edges a little more. And that sounds simple, but there is a little more to it than you'd think. A first part we need to modify is this section at the bottom. You can see this line over here very slightly, but you can already expect the bottom of the body goes inwards just a little. But before we can make a cut on that line, I still need to clean up something at the side it seems. I'm not sure if you have any geometry like this on your model, but you don't want there to be a cut already. This side looks alright, so it must be on the other side. You can just try to select both of these polygons and melt them together. Let's also do that with the other ones here. Okay, both our sides seem to be identical again. Now to make this cut we initially try to make, get the line cut or the knife tool, and make sure the visible only option is turned off, and just make a cut from the edge to the end while holding shift so it is a straight line. After that we can select the edges at the bottom, I'm going to do this with the Life Selection tool, get them at both sides, and now we can just grab these horizontal ones, and with the Scale tool we can now easily move these in a little on the X axis. It might also be a good idea to hold Shift while doing this, just in case we want to move this back later on. Then we know it was done in a round number. Great, moving on to that part at the top here, I'm going to check if this will work by making a loop selection at the top and just beveling it straight away. But you can see it is doing something wrong at the front side unfortunately. I'm pretty sure it is because of this extrusion we made earlier, I'm sorry about that. So actually we need to delete these polygons at the front, they're wrong anyway. I also feel like there is a hidden edge here, yeah, that is definitely messing up something. So let's get rid of this as well. I'm going to put that correct edge back in place with the snapping function. Okay, in the edge mode we can now close this off again with the bridge tool. Just drag from one edge to the other. Also, just to be sure, I'm going to select all edges with Ctrl or Command and A and pressing U and O to optimize everything. That is something you can't do enough when manually modifying stuff. It will always try to fix everything that is wrong. Ok, now with this front polygon we will not scale it this time. Instead, let's use the loop cut tool for example, 
and make some cuts right where the footsteps end. You can also move them around a little if you need to by just using the loop selection tool, which can be accessed by pressing U and L. I want them to be just slightly more towards the middle. Now we can make an extrusion of this middle polygon again, that will work this time. And this edge can also go down a little, and maybe also select these points so we can get the angle right. This should be better now. Let's see if the beveling works this time. I'm going to start with the vertical ones first. Just zero subdivisions probably even looks the best right now. And after that we can use the loop selection tool again to select the ring at the top. But we don't need to bevel the part at the back here, so deselect these edges by holding control or command and clicking them. Let's get the bevel on here again, and this time it seems to behave as we expect it to. Moving on again, these beams can also use a little bit of care. The easiest way to select these is using the life selection tool with only select visible elements still turned off. And in the side view, only brush over the vertical ones. You can combine multiple selections by holding shift of course. Double check if you didn't get any horizontal ones. And now we can bevel these just very gently. This way you can already tell it catches a little more reflection on the corners, which looks nice. Next up is the seed. You can already select these cubes and make them editable. Mine is also a little wide I guess. Okay, with both selected, go in the polygon mode and select both front facing polygons. Then press I for the inner extrusion tool and make an extrusion like this. After that we maybe can select the corner edges real quick and bevel these already. Two subdivisions looks good. With the loop selection tool we can also select both these rings at the top and bevel them. But you need to make sure not to go overboard with these. When you take a closer look at the corner here, you can see it overlaps the other bevel and kind of turns inside out. So undo that and try it again, but stop before it overlaps the intersection here. Ok, now we can finish this by pushing these middle polygons in a little, so it doesn't look this flat anymore. A next quick and easy part to bevel is right here around the wheels at the back. Just select these two edges on the inside and make a bevel with something like three subdivisions maybe. Some of the final adjustments we will make to the model will happen at the back here. I want to start with a bevel on these edges here. But by just hovering over them I can already spot something is wrong again. Because of my not so clever extrusion trick again, unfortunately. I'm sorry about that. You see this full line? This will give problems because it has another point connected to the middle of that edge. And that is not how 3D geometry should work. So if you would try to bevel these edges right now, you can see some glitchy stuff like this. Let's fix this by going in the side view with our knife or line cut tool. And what we need right now is a cut from the middle point to the top of this polygon. And also don't forget to do the same thing at the bottom here. It has the same problem. And also make sure it goes all the way to the bottom, otherwise we would just be moving the problem to the second polygon. If everything went well, these cuts should also have made their way to the other side, and they did. But I notice another little problem on my model at least, yours may not have this. I hope it doesn't. You can see this bumpy shading. It are the remaining points I forgot to clean up after melting these polygons to each other some time ago. Just to be sure, I'm going to move these bottom edges back in place again, with the snap tool to be precise. And now I can delete these unused points with confidence. Maybe selecting all points and using the optimize function would also do the job, but this way I know exactly what happened. Let's get these edges back in place, I remember the distance I moved them. And hopefully you didn't have this problem and it was just a mistake by me, but it should be fine now. Alright then, attempt 2 at making bevels around this area, but that still seems to mess up big time. So undo that, and select all edges with Ctrl and A again, and hit U and O to optimize everything, so we are sure everything is connected. Nice, that finally fixed it. So uh, 2 subdivisions for these, 
and I'm going to do another bevel at the top edge here. This one can be larger. And finally one at the bottom too. Maybe keep this one a little more simple with just one subdivision, because we already have these slanted edges on both sides. Okay, now this is finished, get in the side view and roughly select all the outer edges with the live selection tool and also only select visible turn off. And while holding control or command you can also brush over these edges, we don't need to be selected. Also make sure to check the other views to quickly get rid of the excess edges. I'm also going to add these two little ones back again. Let's bevel these and hope it works. I can see a little glitch at the corner here, but that is just because I made it too large, so make sure you don't make it overlap its own corners. Great, that looks good now. One last thing I want to do at this part is making the whole back portion a little smaller than the rest of the forklift. We could start moving points around and stuff, but you already noticed how complicated stuff gets with just this simple shape. So instead of doing that, we will use the taper deformer. Drag it on top of the cube that represents the forklift body. And let's see, I think we need to rotate this. And when you increase the strength, you should notice how it tries to squeeze your cube object inside of the purple lines. By moving it around and also resizing it, you can control exactly how it looks without making permanent changes to your model, so that is a very good thing. But to get the best result, you should probably avoid it overlapping the whole back portion and just keep it all the way at the end bit behind the wheel like this. It also gives a little funky shading with these default light and material, but I'm pretty sure it will be just fine when we move on. One last thing I want to change on the model itself is here at the dashboard maybe. Select these two polygons at the inside and with the scale tool and holding control or command I'm going to make one small extrusion horizontally and then a larger one and then we can select these four new polygons and use the extrude tool to push these in. So we create some room for the legs. Actually I'm going to redo mine real quick because of the proportions, but you shouldn't worry about that. So that is the forklift. Let's finish the scene by adding a floor object. It should really be right up to the wheels to look convincing, otherwise it's floating. And now we can start adding some materials. They are really simple on this one. Just keep the default values of the material and only change the color. I will also work with just two colors. The first one will be some very rich yellow, maybe a little orange actually. And my second one will be a dark grey with a touch of blue to it. In a minute you will see how these two simple materials can be very powerful and how the right kind of lighting and bevels on the right spots can really make your scene come alive. So I'm going to apply these to all the objects now. I will make all of it dark grey and only keep that bottom part yellow. But at the bottom part we should turn this area where someone's feet would go to dark grey as well, like it is on the image. And you can do that by selecting the polygons that need to be changed and just dragging the material on it when it's still selected. This also makes me notice this little piece is sticking out here, so let's quickly move that in position. I also see a huge gap at the bottom here, I don't know when this happened, but I guess that is something with just my model and not yours, so don't worry about it, I'm going to bridge these together again. It won't be very visible anyway, so this will do for now. So this is starting to look pretty good, but we still need some lights to make it really good. First of all we will use an area light as some kind of overhead softbox. Make it pretty large like this and move it up quite a bit above the scene. The intensity can also be a little stronger on this one. And we want some area shadows for this as well, for the realistic effect. Okay, for the second light I will just duplicate this one and move it to the right here. You can already scale it down a little. And also set the intensity back to 100 because it doesn't need to be that bright. And rotate it so it's angled towards the scene. Our third light can be another duplicate but place it at the front. This one can be a little smaller than the other ones. I guess we can also place this one a little further away, just for a little variation in light. Let's render and see what this gives us so far. 
and that is pretty decent, but the object still blends in with the background at some places. A first thing I will do again, like I do in most of my tutorials, is adding a light with the ambient occlusion option turned on. And this way we can make the whole scene brighter, regardless of the position of the light. You could also use a global illumination in the render settings, but that makes the rendering so much slower, with little to no difference. But it doesn't need to be at 100% intensity, 40% will do. This way we get a little more difference between the object and the background. All I'm missing now is a little more shadow around the places that should be darker. An easy way to do this is going in the render settings and adding an ambient occlusion effect. And this will give us a little more extra detail and shadow at the small places. Actually my yellow can also be a little darker, more orangey. This looks pretty good, but not exactly like I remember it from my test version. And that could just be because of how close I placed the lights. This can make a huge difference. That is mainly why it is so hard to master lighting in Cinema 4D. So I am going to move all of these a little further away. And by doing just that, my forklift is more defined now. Okay, to make this look cute, or whatever you like to call it, we need to add a camera object, and inside of this we can set the focal length to something like 80. It's like using a zoom lens on a smaller object, so a higher focal length often makes things look a little smaller, and also the other way around. From here you can start doing whatever you like with the forklift. I will be adding this little animation to it, which you've seen at the beginning. But first we need that little crate it will be lifting. It's just a bunch of cubes really. If you want something similar to this, I recommend keeping the base the same as mine is built, so it looks like something a forklift can actually pick up. But what you put on top of it could be anything of course, probably something more interesting than my cube. Let's get this on the floor level and check if the forks would actually fit in between. And you can see this is why I wanted the forks to be lower than they were shown on the reference image. Maybe I should also make the whole base of the crate a little bigger so it doesn't need to sit so low on the ground. Let's also add a wood material to this base. A slightly brown skin color is a good start for this. And we can also add a wood texture, which you can find under the surfaces drop down. And just decrease the mix strength a bit. And that should look good for these little cubes here. For the top cube I will make it just white, that looked nice in the test scene I made. Great, we can now prepare everything for the animation and finish things up. I'm going to use a protection tag on my camera so I can keep this view locked. And let's also rename this group to load. All of that will move together of course. Let's also make one big group for the entire forklift. Now I would like to get the fork parts in a separate group but they are in a symmetry object right now, together with objects that don't need to move with it. So what we can do is duplicating the symmetry object with all its contents. And let's hide the second one for now by clicking on these dots until they are red. And that first symmetry group will only contain the fork, so we can remove anything except the fork parts. Now for the other one we can unhide it by clicking the dots again, and only delete the fork parts. Okay, the only things missing right now are the bars that should be connected to the frame. So find these and group them together with the symmetry object. Okay, to the actual animation part now. I'm going to keyframe it when it is just outside of the scene. And on something like frame 80 it will come back in frame again. Maybe also open our F curves real quick, so we can smooth out this endpoint and make the movement at the end more gentle. I need a little more frames to fit the whole animation in this, so let's extend this to something like 200 frames. After a small pause it should start lifting, but first we need this crate in place. Make sure both the load and the fork are selected and set the first keyframe. And after that you can move both up and make a second one a few seconds further away in time. 
Ok, to make it all move together now, it is best to group both the load and the forklift together, so we are sure the movement will be exactly the same. You can now simply animate this new null and make it move out of frame. And that finishes this tutorial. I also made the crit drop in frame at the start so it becomes a nice loop. That's something you can do with just the same techniques. I hope you liked this video. I'm sorry about some of the mistakes during the modeling, but I also hope you learned some tricks from that to fix your own models if something goes wrong. The project file will be available on our Patreon again as usual, and feel free to send us your end result if you want to. 